Hey guys, it's Miko from MO Sound Lab, and today we'll find out if AI has replaced audio engineers. Okay, so AI seems to be the talk of the town. If you haven't heard of it and all the dangers related to it, then um, I'm not sure where you've been. But today we're gonna talk about if it's gonna replace mixing and audio engineers in general. And um, the tools that we have nowadays really, I'm not sure if they're even using real AI, but they do market that they are using AI. So let's see what they sound like. So today we'll be looking at Sonable and we're gonna be looking at Isotope. And just to be clear, I have purchased these plugins with my own money. So uh, I do have these plugins and I think they're cool. Uh, I don't use them. So that is where I essentially stand on the topic myself. Even if they are good, I don't enjoy using them. I really like to be in control of the sound myself. I like to do that. I love doing that. Why would I push a button and let it do the fun stuff for me? That's just me. Uh, but let's jump straight into it. Um, we have a mix going on. We have drums, bass, guitar and synth. And we're gonna mix all of those stems separately using Sonable's Smart EQ. And we're gonna be doing the same thing with Nectar, which is Isotope's mixing plugin that has an automatic AI <laughs> mixing function on it. And then we're gonna master them with Ozone and its automatic mastering process. Okay, let's start with Sonable's Smart EQ3. And the thing that I love about this plugin is that I can actually create groups for all the instances that I have going on. So I have four stem tracks essentially, or buses. I have a drum bus, I have a guitar bus, bass bus, and a synth bus. And I'm gonna learn them all simultaneously. Just clicking here and playing back the audio. Simple as that, I just played like three bars of music and now it's done the entire mix. <laughs> uh, you can probably sense my opinion on the matter. And now I'm curious to see what it actually did to these instruments, so let's have a listen to the drums. So it didn't really do much. Uh, all these changes that we see here are like um, 1 or 2 dB. Uh, so it added some mids, added some punch around 80, 90 hertz, and then just a notch down some frequencies from the high end uh, and maybe boosted some of the ultra highs. For the bass, it did a little bit more. It boosted around 3 dB of the lows and then cut some of the highs. Um, let's have a listen to what that actually sounds like. Bypassed. I would say these are very subtle moves, but you know, <laughs> as I always say, you know, you want to have the source track sounding as good as possible. So what it's actually doing Seems like it's doing nothing, which would be the correct thing to do if the mix is pretty good. Same thing for the guitars, not really doing much. Probably that uh, mud cuts around 250 maybe. Um, that is the main thing. And then polishing some of the highs. Let's have a listen to what the guitars sound with and without of this Smart EQ3. <laughs> I actually like what it does. It takes away some of the nasty stuff around, uh, you know, 5K, 4K. So that is pretty cool. And what it's doing here, I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to know, but it sounded good. I think it sounded good. Um, now, um, since I'm not sure if it makes any sense listening to this, but hey, let's do it. Bypassing. Um, even though it's doing quite a bit, it's pretty difficult to hear a big change because it's a very specific kind of synth sound. Uh, it's adding lows, adding some mids, 
cutting uber highs and uh, mainly the thing that I'm interested in here is how it's making them blend together with um, the track view. So if we go back to the drum instance that we have here and we can go to the group view, you can see that we have L1, L2 and L3. These are layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. So right now what we're doing, we're giving it kind of information what we want to do with the mix. So we currently are saying that we want these all to be represented equally. But let's say I want the scenes to be kind of in the background. Uh, let's say I want to have drums first and then guitar and bass sort of in the middle. Um, let's see what that would actually sound like. And I'm not even sure if I have to relearn this, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, to see if it does something differently. Now on top of that I'm gonna master this song using Ozone and learn this chorus. I think it actually sounds pretty good. Uh, now, as far as AI goes, like I said before, I don't really believe that these have real AI, but it does figure out that this is rock music uh, and knows what to do with rock music. So that is sort of primitive AI, but it's not really doing necessarily super smart things. Um, the cool thing about Ozone is that I can actually go in inside and kind of see what it actually did. So. These are quite drastic EQ moves, boosting a lot of mids, cutting a lot of lows, <laughs> adding a lot of brightness, stuff like that. Um, let's see. So um, it does things. Um, in case you don't know what all of these are doing, equalizer is just an EQ. Stabilizer is sort of if you think about um, something like Soothe, but much more wide. So it's kind of trying to force the mix to fit a certain EQ spec and then, then doing it in a transparent way, or at least trying to do that. Impact is doing something to transients. Um, imager is controlling the width of different bands, so how wide is the low end, how wide are the mids, how wide are the treble areas and the, you know, uber highs. And it's uh, turning uh, down the width for this mix for some reason. Uh, dynamic EQ is listening for bad resonances and controlling those. And maximizer is just making everything loud. Uh, personally, when I'm using Ozone, I only use the maximizer and I use the IRC1 just to get things loud. That is all I use usually when I have a song demo. So this is ultimately what they think is a perfect AI mix, soundable EQ for the tracks and uh, Ozone 10 for mastering. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like. Okay, um, I think that's enough. Right now, I feel like the drums are super pokey, and I just realized that I told Sonnyball Smart EQ to have uh, drums on the first layer, so give them more space in the mix. So it's my fault. Uh, let's see if I go back 
and change that order of the layers. I do like the synths on the background, but I just think the drums were too, just too loud. The cymbals were poking and stuff like that. Not sure if I have to le relearn this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I think it's better already. Uh, let's relearn the mastering too. So Ozone 10. Um, relearn. Okay, let's have a listen to it again from the beginning. I hate to admit it, but it sounds pretty good. <laughs> like, it's not perfect, so I would change a couple of things around and stuff like that, but just to think that I could potentially be an audio engineer, just have these on the stems, these plugins, and just click a few buttons and let it do all the things, and then just have a kind of like a listen through and tweak the things that I don't like. Feels pretty crazy. So, um, yeah, slightly worried. Uh, let's see if the isotope uh, Neutron is even better than Smart EQ. Neutron is very similar to Ozone, but it's for mixing. So I'm just gonna tell this to learn what the track is and let it do its thing. Not gonna touch anything. And let's see if I have to volume balance them manually or something. To me, it sounds like it's doing a lot, like a lot of compression. Maybe it's good, but to me, it kind of seems a little bit over the top. So Sculptor is sort of similar to that uh, Sooth type of a plugin again, uh, kind of forcing a multi-band EQ to do certain stuff. EQ. Clearly has a problem with the amount of snare that I have in there, but hey, maybe it's uh, right. Compressing lows and highs separately, and then doing like a sub compression thing. Interesting. And then I believe it's exciting the highs. So, seems a bit extreme to me, but maybe it works in the mix. Um, I like to keep things quite dynamic myself which is why I don't mix at all. Uh, let's do the same for bass. Okay. It's hearing a resonance there. Um, and uh, controlling the high end of the Music Man bass. The Music Man bass has a very sharp high end to it, which you may like or you may not like. Um, it's compressing the lows and highs separately, which is what I actually do myself many times as well. Same kind of processing as with the drums. Um, yeah, very similar to what it did with the drums, actually. Um, let's see what it does to guitars.
definitely wants to reshape the high end a little bit and control some of the subs. But then it's boosting back some of the lows and highs. And there's even a dynamic EQ around 5k. Hmm. Interesting. Doing a lot of stuff. I <laughs> tend to not like things to do a lot of things. But hey, that's what it's doing. And then let's do something to the synths too. Um, Okay, um, let's see. Okay, this is quite drastic. Uh, essentially cutting a lot of the mids and adding some highs. Um, that's interesting. Okay, I have a pretty good volume balance now. Good enough for this mix. Let's have Ozone 10 do the mastering again for this new mix done by Isotope Nectar. Okay, so in comparison, I would say this is much more compressed, way too compressed, very saturated, very distorted even. And that is uh, because, you know, uh, Nectar actually has distortion and compression and all that stuff going on while the Sunnable Smart EQ is just EQ. So um, it's not apples to apples comparison. But anyways, this is AI mixing and now with AI mastering, let's see what it thinks. Sounds good. I personally, I really actually liked the Sunnable EQ with Ozone 10. I thought those two together actually sounded very good, but I have to say this uh, Nectar with Ozone 10 is just way too compressed, distorted. The cymbals sound very fake, almost like there's a fake reverb going on or something like that. I don't like it. I don't like it that much. Obviously, I think we will see much better AI tools in future for mixing and I think already if I'm running Sunnable's uh, automatic smart EQ with those layer functions potentially I would have the vocals on the layer one and everything else on the middle and then maybe synths on the bottom because who cares about synths? No, it just sounds good that way and then with this mastering I think I could get pretty professional sounding results super fast when doing mixes like this, but hey, um, maybe in future there's like an automatic thing coming on that just does everything automatically and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this kind of content, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing and all that stuff, bell icon, you know what to do. Um, thanks and see you on the next one. Bye bye. I've been Miko from MO Sound Lab.